Hello, good morning, everyone. Um, firstly, apologies. I'm, I'm an engineer, so uh, this stuff doesn't come naturally to me. Um, but, you know, it was, it was, it was very much appreciated. Um, we've come over here en masse, there's five of us here today. Um, I'm very used to standing up here and talking about ourselves. Um, but, again, it's, it's, it's great to have an opportunity to come and talk to, you know, all you guys about how important our supply chain is to what we want to achieve. Um, so for those of you who don't know us, um, Zephyr is a platform that has been pioneered over a number of years um, under, under the, the leadership of Airbus. Uh, in 2022, um, we launched a new entity. Uh, so we're still entirely owned by Airbus, but we've co going through a, a, a new launch as uh, a brand called Alto. Um, and there, there are a number of very good reasons for that. We have some very big ambitions for the coming years. Um, so our CTO is in the room. If anybody wants to talk through the details of, of, of that part of the business, uh, please feel free to grab him. Um, but yeah, so Alto is, is a subsidiary of Airbus, and my, my role here is I'm going to present uh, our project and, and how Amprius fits in. Um, so starting with the use case, really, we, we live in an unconnected world. So, so a lot of us take for granted things that we just use every day. We pick up our cell phone, we'll do some Google searches. Um, you know, we, we, we don't... We don't question how difficult it is to bring those searches, the, the, that kind of capability to the masses. Um, you know, the, the global uh, economy for the cell phone market, it's, it's $5.2 trillion. You know, they're, they're big, big business. And, you know, as I say, there's a, there's a billion health-related queries to Google per day. Um, you know, on top of that, there, there are many challenges that, that the world still face and, and, and you know, I think the point we want to get across here is, is you know, the purpose of our platform. We have three main bi business markets. One is, one is the connectivity market, which we see as a huge, a huge opportunity for, for us in the future. Um, we have kind of global surveillance and, and, and uh, scientific kind of data gathering, wildfire monitoring, um, and we also have a big um, security and defense market as well. Um, and, and we're very pleased to say we're very active across those three areas. Um, so that's the problem we're trying to solve. The marketing guys have some very good videos. Wingspan 25 meters and weighing only 75 kilos. 100% solar electric, operating above 60,000 feet a record-breaking 64 days in the stratosphere, non-stop. With our ambitions set on much more, the Alto Zephyr High Altitude Platform Station. Think the unthinkable, and it's now achievable. Zephyr can act as a telecommunications tower in the sky. Astonishingly high coverage ultra-low latency, seamless infrastructure for MNOs to connect people from the stratosphere, extending the radio access network with our coverage-as-a-service approach, helping to bridge the digital divide to connect the unconnected and the underserved in ways not possible before, enabling new capabilities for governments to use stratospheric connectivity and Earth observation to monitor borders, enforce law and order, and manage disasters. Game-changing payload agnostic technology to help us build a better stratospheric future. The future is stratospheric. So that's kind of a taste. Um, this is our product. This is the, the Alsa Zephyr. So it's a 25-meter wingspan aircraft. Um, it's entirely solar and battery-powered. Um, what makes us special is, is we operate in the stratosphere, so we operate above 60,000 feet. Um, that's really important for having a persistent capability. If you're below that level, you're, you're vulnerable to weather conditions, you're, you're vulnerable to, to you know, air traffic. It's just not somewhere you can put a, 
a persistent capability uh, unless you're targeting the stratospheric area. Um, so we're very proud of what we've achieved so far. You know, we have a 25 meter wingspan aircraft and our all at mass is 75 kilograms. Um, why is that important? Well, it means things like the performance of our energy storage system is critical to the performance of our platform. So we work very closely with our supply base, Ampris being one of the key ones, to really get every inch of performance we can to achieve our missions. Um, I'll go through our, our, our records in a bit more detail, but we have quite a few world records in this space. Um, you know, we, we flew in 2022 for 64 days continuously. Um, it's, it's just not been done uh, before. We're very proud of it, and we're very proud that Ampri has helped us achieve that. Um, and you know, this, this, this product's been 20 years in the making. Um, it's, it's, you know, it is something very, very special. Um, so quite a few people ask, okay, so where do we kind of fit in that whole connected world environment? So you know, we're, we're all familiar with how our, our mobile phones work on terrestrial networks on the ground. Um, you know, ab above that, your next option is these large LEO satellite constellations, and more traditionally above that, you have the GEO satellite constellations. Essentially, there is a very complicated trade-off between the cost of operating these systems, the uh, performance you get out of them, latency is a big, big, big discussion point when it comes to uh, communication systems, and essentially there is a huge gap in capability. Um, you know, we we... We're very, very used to using our mobile phones on the ground in, in connected areas. If you're like me, I grew up in a rural place in the United Kingdom. I could drive for 10, mi 10 miles into a, into a mountain area and have no, no phone coverage. Um, and when you think of that on the scale of the unconnected world, it just makes no sense today to be putting in cell phone towers in large, large areas of, of sparse populations. Where the Alto platform really excels is, is, is one Zephyr can provide the same footprint as 250 cell towers. Um, and what you'll see in the next slide is, um, I'm gonna skip this one. The next slide is, you know, we're very used to high density communications, but when you go out into the, the kind of the more niche areas, so you're looking at rural areas with farming, you're looking at uh, mountainous regions, the, the, the comms just, just aren't there. So that's the con connectivity case. Um, this is something that we're slightly more familiar with, and I believe I've been told I have to play this slide manually. So this is actually an extract from a flight we did back in 2018. So again, we've been at this for some time. But what you can see is, is this is an actual video footage from our platform. So this, this is part of the, the surveillance piece that we do. We can operate real time um, over areas of interest where we can, we can have, you know, for the best description I can give you is imagine like a, a, a Google Earth Live, um, and that's the sort of capability we can offer. Um, I'm kind of glossing over these because the important things for me is these next slides coming up, okay? So we've been on a journey. We are currently on our eighth iteration of aircraft, and, and we've been on this iteration for a number of years, mainly because we are, that, we, we are kind of there, we kind of reached the platform that we want to take into market or that we are taking into market. But just to go through some of those highlights, so as, as a platform, it was conceived in 2001, uh, and it was conceived by a very brilliant man called Chris Keller, who's no longer with us today. Our production facility in Farnborough is named the Kelleher Production Facility. Um, he is really the pioneer of this sort of aircraft. In, in 2014, we demonstrated our first kind of serious flight. Uh, and in uh, 2006, uh, we did our first kind of serious payload trial flight. Now, where it gets really fun is in 2010, we had our maiden flight of our, of our Zephyr 8 platform. And we set a world record of 14 days continuous flight. Now, it gets... People get very excited about this endurance record, this, 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 this maximum number, number of days we're in the stratosphere. And I, I fought very hard to show you something next, which, which really tells the story of why suppliers like Amprius are key to, to businesses like ours. So in 
2018, we started working with Amprius, and thanks to the work of John and Ionel, um, I remember one of my highlights of my career was sitting down in a, uh, in a restaurant in Toulouse, and we engineered the requirements for the cell, which is pretty much the cell we still use today. Um, and that cell, and I'm skipping over this a little bit because I want to show you the next slide. Um, that cell flew for 26 days straight in 2018, and it flew for 64 days in 2022. And not only did we fly for 64 days in 2022, we actually flew across continents. You know, we, we, we launched here in the USA, and we went out over the Atlantic Ocean, we went down south, and we flew into South America. Um, so it was a pretty exceptional flight for us. So this is what I'm trying to rush to, okay? And this is where technology improvements that are happening here really make a difference to the industry. So what you can see in the red line, this is our 2014 flight. This is the 14-day flight where we broke the 14-day world record. What you can see is, yes, we did achieve stratospheric flight, but when you fly during the day and you have a lot of sunlight and you're on solar, you, 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 you have enough energy to sustain the stratospheric flight. Where energy storage becomes really critical is the night time. You're basically, you're trying to survive the night until the sun comes up. And what you were seeing in this flight, we were having to drop down to much lower altitudes where we use less energy. And you know, we were basically in a, in a survival mode. Our first flight with Amprius in 2018, which is the blue line, we were blown away. We, we ended up into the stratosphere, and we never dropped down below the stratosphere. We stayed there persistently for, for 24 days. And again, in 2022, we, we, we blew that out of the water by, by three times. We did it for 64 days. Um, so I think just, just the message for me here is, is you know, this is why technologies that, that are being developed here are so important to the rest of the world. Um, our ambitions for the future. Um, this, is, this, is, this is, again, it's, it's, it's key for us to kind of help help frame the picture of what we're trying to do, okay? We actually have a serial production line of these things. We are no longer a scientific experiment. We are no longer an interesting part of R&D. We have a production line in the UK where we have aircraft coming off nose to tail. Um, we have several, several aircraft out in, in the world as part of our fleet, and we are continually adding to that. And, and I won't share the numbers here today, but when you look at the actual um, when you look at the actual schedule of our production for the next few years, it is frightening. You know, our, our business model is to have entire fleets of these things, as, as much like Leo Constellations do. Um, we are working towards being able to simultaneously fly 50 of these things at a time to offer a, a complete mesh solution, um, and, and we are well on our way to that target. Um, you know, like everyone, we are a business, so we want to. We want to stay in the stratosphere indefinitely, but obviously there are limitations. So, so we have a very clear target here of flying for 200 days at a time. Um, and we're not that far away from there. You know, we're, 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 we, we are getting very, very close. It's not so critical for us in terms of a business, but it just shows how long we've come in our, in our journey together. Um, and the other thing is, and, and we made an announcement earlier this month, um, so we, we announced our first permanent launch and landing location out in Kenya. Um, so, so part of our, our, our global kind of business case is, is we are going to launch these permanent launch and landing facilities, uh, Kenya being the first one. Um, so yeah, we, we will have like these permanent operations where these aircraft transit up and down from the stratosphere and then start their journey to wherever they're needed. Um, and that's it. That's me. Thank you very much.